Hi everyone, Byron Martin here at Logis Greenhouses and right now we are in the middle of April and the greenhouses have actually come into the beginning of their summer growth where spring is just beginning outside and um, we're in the, also in the middle of a coronavirus um, shutdown so our greenhouses are pretty much empty but full of plants and we'd like to sort of um, show you around and see what's blooming and um, talk a little bit about um, what we're doing here. Um, right here we have our Medanilla Magnifica. This is um, a melastone that um, is uh, very showy and now in the trade. Um, this is being grown quite freely in um, the U.S. and in Europe. Um, and it's one of our plants that flowers over a very long period of time with these large um, bracts and pink flowers on them. Um, we also have our little Anastasia here in bloom, which um, is actually kind of a weed in um, tropical areas, but um, certainly puts on a long show of flowers. You can see all the buds are forming on it. There's our Pacistachia lutea, which is our um, lollipop plant. And um, it's actually loves long days, so it's right in its um, period of joy right now, flowering very heavily. This is um, a Vigna, which is actually in the family of the um, green uh, string bean, and it has this interesting flower. If you look at that little curlicue there, when an insect lands on it, out come the stamens and the pistils, and then goes back in and um, pollinates it. And this plant is actually kind of a weedy thing, so if you're in a tropical area, you probably don't want to plant it, but if you're growing it as a container plant, this plant is in flower all year round for us. It never stops. There's buds that come you can see they're all forming along the stems up here and even after it's bloom these blooms are going by more flowers will come out of it the trick to containing this is to keep it in a really tight pot which of course challenges in terms of your ability to water it but um, if you keep it in a really tight pot it tends to flower very heavily um, this is an old timer we've had this is alocasia cupria which is really a beautiful alocasia it's been out of production now for a number of years. It was put into tissue culture, which is really the only way to um, reproduce alocasias effectively. Um, but we still have held on to this over the years. And really a marvelous um, and showy um, alocasia that we grow. Um, our um, Brentfalsia um, passiflora um, is in bloom and this is the yesterday today and tomorrow you can see the flowers start out um, dark purple and then they fade to a white and this particular clone has a wonderful smell to it um, this is our um, climbing lang lang vine <clears throat> and you can see we have our layers here going on you know, we put drips into them this is how we root them they don't root very well as cuttings so we um, actually do a layering it's a kind of a time-consuming process, but um, it does allow us to produce them. You can see up here all the um, aluminum foil packs on them. Um, the flowers on this are intensely fragrant at night, and they actually have a kind of a wonderful fruity smell to them. They come out on spurs. I don't know if we can find any here that have buds. Oh, here we go. So here's one that's um, actually coming into bloom right now and you can see it has this hook on it with actually a thorn at the end of it and these flowers will emerge over many many times um, even after several years you'll keep getting flowers out of that a coffee tree here this is our yellow seeded coffee you can see the buds starting to form right here along the stem and um, probably in another month or so this will be in full bloom um, this has yellow coffee the cherries are actually yellow. The coffee looks like any other coffee. Um, it was brought in from um, Central America as a dwarf, and we grow it, and it's no more dwarf than any other. So it's generally a standard um, Arabica variety. But it has an interesting um, yellow cherries to it. Here's our Bougainvillea Barbara Cost. Now, this is the season for Bougainvilleas. They tend to flower for us as the days shorten and as the days increase. So by the time we get through fall, we have this late, early winter blooming cycle. And as we come out and the days increase, we have another cycle that comes in the springtime. Um, this one is a red one, which um, is actually in the greenhouses, it actually has a pink tone to it. If you put that outside, the color of that flower will get brilliant, brilliant red. But under the glazing that we have here, it mutes the color a little bit. This is um, one of our winter blooming passion flowers. It flowers most of the year, but um, it actually 
will kind of wane a bit in terms of flower production. This is uh, Passiflora miniata, a really showy and beautifully beautiful um, bright color to it. Um, it's also an edible fruit, and here's the beginning of the fruit. We have some of our staff here who is who cross pollinates this. This has to have a another plant to another clone of it to make it to fruit. And there's one there, and they, they like little round beach balls. Cut them open. The inside flesh is very sweet, and is actually used in South America as a commercial crop um, in markets. Up here, way up hanging in the top, is our. Um, Streptosol and James and I, which is the marmalade bush. And this is really a wonderful winter bloomer if you've got a lot of light and you can pay attention to your watering. So it flowers for us as the days shorten and goes on from um, December or maybe a little earlier all the way until, well, here we are in April and it's still going at it. But as summer comes along, you'll see the flowers will wane a little bit. And that's when we cut it back, take it outside, reconstitute it, you might say, for um, the next season. There's a mallow that we grow called Phimosa. Um, it's a, actually a very interesting um, red flowered um, relative of the hibiscus. Flowers first pretty much all year round. Um, it does like it um, with good light and a little bit of stress on it. That seems to be keeping it um, in terms of container pot size, um, keeps it in flower for us. But just in the very darkest days of the winter does it go out of bloom and then it comes back into flower for us. Over here, we have our um, Clarodendron Thompsoni, the Glory Bower. This is actually flowering um, right now, just beginning. You can see the these are the calyx, which are white, and the red flowers poke out. Very showy plant. And the trick to growing this is to stress it during the winter time, even to the point where it drops all its leaves. So you dry it down, you grow it cool. Um, it drops its leaves normally if you let it go through a normal cycle, but really get it to denude itself and then as it comes out in the springtime, every single tip on it um, will have blooms on it. And this will go on for a month or two before it starts to um, taper off. We also have um, our white petria right here. This is um, Queen's Reef, and this is an alber form of it. Maybe if we come over here, we can show you a little better how it looks. See, the chains hang down. And the interesting thing about this is, is if you touch it, the flowers will fall off and they pinwheel down to the ground. Let me do that again. If you touch it, you can see the pinwheels form. And it's a great thing that kids can do. I did it when I was young. We would collect them and climb up someplace high and throw them off and watch the pinwheels flow down. So that's what you do when you grow up in a greenhouse. You have fun with the uh, petria. This is an interesting plant. This is a uh, Discaristi hygrophyllides, and um, it is a um, acanthaceae um, and has this uh, purple flower that comes over a long period of time. Uh, we've grown this as a standard, but it can be grown as a bush. It also has kind of an odd smell to it, which um, is somewhat peculiar, um, but it is a very showy plant, and it's really coming back into its, we pruned it back, and it's coming back into its uh, productive state, which will be, you know, for the next three, four, five months going into summertime. Here we have another passion flower that's pretty much an ever bloomer for us. This is Passiflora persei, and there is the bloom on it, which is this brilliant orange flower, brilliant orange, and it's never, it's never out of bloom. It flowers all year round for us. Um, it's a little. In terms of its production, it's a little funky in the winter time for us in terms of rooting and producing. It's kind of um, so the, the young plants kind of slow down for us, but um, it never stops blooming and it has quite a bit of vigor to it as um, you know, some plants are slower growing and so on. This thing has a lot of vigor to it. Up above here, we have um, our uh, Brugmansia hybrid uh, pink perfusion, which um, is a very low growing tight habit to it. Um, the flowers are somewhat, um, well, it's, got, it's going through a flower cycle now. It's just begun and it'll come on heavier and heavier. But the plant flowers at a very, very low age, very heavy, and makes um, a nice mounding pot rather than being uh, very tall and um, somewhat gangly. Many 
of the Bergmansiers are really these very tall growing trees that have to get up five or six feet. This will stop flowering two feet out of the pot or even less. So it does make a basket and a very contained plant for gardeners. There's our uh, Thumbergia batascombii. Always love this plant. It, um, I love Thumbergias in general, but um, this one um, is kind of a it's not, well, it can be a vine. I've seen it grown as a vine, but for us, generally, it grows as sort of this upright plant that we put a little support onto it. But the flowering cycle has begun, and that flowering cycle will go on for months and months and months all through the summertime um, until we finally have to do something with it that gets so big. So we are in the coronavirus closed state, and there are many things going on in the world, but at Logis Greenhouses, we are taking the opportunity to do some much needed repairs and so we don't have to disrupt our customers as they come in. And this is a bench in our big greenhouse that um, was in bad need of repair. And um, Mike, our maintenance guy and his uh, crew have come in here and we've taken everything out and we've uh, rebuilt the bench and rebuilt the supports on the greenhouses so that um, it can go another hundred years. Well, thank you for watching. There's a little bit about what's going on at Logies at this time. If you'd like to see us and get more information, reach us at logies.com.